Hey everyone, including the three ladies who might be tuning in, welcome aboard. Forget whatever you've seen in pics and vids, they don't do this beauty justice. The attention to detail and the fit and finish is like on another planet. It's got the wow factor that might make you rethink your love for your Levo comp with its less than exciting matte finish. I snagged this beauty from the bike shop owner for a hefty ransom of $300 for a couple days. But let me tell you, it was worth every penny. Now let's talk power. The 2022 model here packs a 35 newton meter. While the version two Kinevo SL rocks 50, yeah, that's 15 more, but they're like cousins. One's just got a little more pep. First time hitting the trail in the Kinevo SL felt like a dream. Riding a flagship S-Works model as the sun sets was amazing. But hey, it's a moto trail because let's face it, folks in Idaho aren't all gaga over bikes just yet. This bike has a whopping 1300 millimeter wheelbase, making it cruising open motocross trails super fun and a breeze. Sadly, the upper part of this trail was snowed in, so I only got a few rock gardens to test this 170 millimeters of rear travel out, but hey, it did impress. Kinevo SL outshines any other rear suspension Specialized has ever made. Let's talk about this bike's oomph without getting too technical. It's not exactly a powerhouse if you catch my drift, but enough about that. A little bit disappointing to be perfectly honest. I discovered a major issue with this bike after my first ride. I have to say it was a bit of a $15,000 letdown. Sometimes wanting something is actually better than having it. So what's the problem? Well, it's not the 68 degree seat tube angle. Let's focus elsewhere. The 465 millimeter seat tube causes major dropper post issues. It's interrupted, so you can't slam the seat post all the way down. Luckily, I had 150 millimeter posts laying around. Downsizing the dropper post was a real quick hack here. Now to put this long seat tube into perspective, the Levo has a 20 millimeter shorter seat tube. Now I'm one of those guys who constantly complains about their seat being in the way on the downhills. Some people are daddy long legs and this isn't an issue, but if you're like me, it's a major issue and may be a deal breaker on this bike. On my second adventure on the Kinevo SL, it was an all day epic. I made two hours of riding and two hours of driving each way, just your normal mountain bike trip. That 68 degree C tube, it's a bit of a love and hate, comfortable in some ways, but it can push you over the back, leading to some lower back pains. Not great when you're a 35 year old old man like myself with lower back pain. The modest power of this bike, 35 newton meters, isn't a big deal on moderate climbs. But boy, on steep ones, that lack of oomph does come back to haunt you. Chasing cows down a blue flow trail was a riot. The Kinevo SL gives the slight edge and push just enough to have a blast. That small dick energy the bike has does have a silver lining. No abrupt power cutoff when you hit the speed limiter. And boy, does this bike love to go fast in a straight line. I'm not gonna pretend to know the exact way to this bike because I really don't care. But all its lightness does make playing around on the trail extremely fun. Something that 50 and 60 pound e-bikes do lack. If you're not a powerhouse like Arnold Schwarzenegger, riding full power bikes with your friend on this one, you're gonna be left in the dust. Desperately scurrying this trail for rock gardens to put this bike to the test, I struck gold. With a 100 foot patch of rock garden, let me tell you how it went. Oh my God, this bike. All right, folks, take a look. It may resemble a specialized enduro, but let me drop some truth bombs. This SL, it rides in a whole other league. Rocking the 230 by 62.5 shock, it's a game changer compared to the Enduro's 205 by 60 trunnion mount. It provides a far different feel on the trail. I've tackled enough suspension rides to recognize a magic carpet when I feel one. And the beauty of this ride may just be in the tune of the Fox Float X2 or the engineers that specialize dialing in the rear axle path. Imagine a long travel 29ers with over 30 years of rear suspension mastery. Specialize, you've really brewed up a winner here. No disappointments, I vouch for it. It's practically an invitation for a gravity defying adventure. All right, listen up. Unlike Rob Rides EMTB, I'm not cashing in marketing checks from Specialized. So let me lay down a reality check. The electronics in this bike, not at all sunshine and rainbows, folks. Apart from the genius TCU mastermind, we've got some pretty outdated charging port vibes that may trigger your anxiety. 
The charging port doesn't exactly scream waterproof to me, but that's also opinion, and I've seen a lot worse out there. It's a little fiddly, you have to make sure it's lining up with the arrows. They could have updated this, but it's saving grace. If you had an old SL bike, the charger's gonna work on this. Which one is worse here, guys? Taking my water bottle cage or hitting me up for a $500 range extender? It's like choosing between losing your favorite snack or shelling out a small fortune for a pack of gum. I never knew a water bottle holder could be so important. And at this point, for the range extender, it's like buying something magical because it kills your range anxiety, but it's way too expensive. Unless, of course, you're a fancy orthopedic surgeon who already got the S-Works and that will be covered. Here's the real kicker. The main battery is non-removable and it's only 320 watt hours. Sometimes in the world of engineering equations, that's just the price you have to pay, folks. You know, the range extender in the water bottle cage thing, it's a little bit like a loose noodle at the dance party. Kind of floppy, but not a showstopper. At least it's not as dramatic as those Bosch bikes where the main battery battery, plays hide and seek, and you need to end up zip tying it in to keep it in check. My range extender might be a hula dancer every now and then, but at least I'm not pulling disappearing acts like the Bosch battery. And let's be honest, I'd rather deal with a wobbly range extender than play electric bike MacGyver with zip ties any day of the week. With more lift assisted bike parks opening their doors to e-bikes, I thought, hey, let's give it a whirl. Dropping in on the KSL, I felt like a pro, or at least a C plus, C minus rider. On the smoothest, most composed, full 29er bikes I've ever straddled in this environment of demanding high loads and sharp corners. And the best part, this bike is quieter than a library on a Sunday morning. No clanking Shimano motors disturbing the peace. And let me tell you, the KSL is an excellent jumping bike. As a certified bumbler casing every other jump, you can trust me on this one. So here's the deal. You don't buy a long travel e-bike for casual cross country rides. Let me tell you how this rides on wildly steep slopes. I mean, it may not seem steep, but plop your GoPro on the ground and suddenly you're looking at Mount Everest. I was seriously panicking on the steep part of this trail. I felt like I was on a tall monster truck and not exactly what you wanna feel on your hard charging enduro bike, right? As the trail opens up into high speed, it did feel very composed and confident, as long as it wasn't steep. And let's talk about brakes. Those fancy $500 Code RSC brakes, they stop on a dime. Soon as I got back to the car, I whipped my phone out to check the bike's geometry chart. Guess what? A bit too tall for comfort. This bike has a 644 stack height, making it not comfortable in steep terrain. Remember, sometimes bikes are like shoes. You gotta go down a size. The KSL in extra large or S5 is more like an S6 or a double extra large. I promise you downsizing will be the golden ticket. Having done a couple back-to-back -back runs on my full power Kinevo on that same section of trail, I promise you 630 stack height is the magic number for all bike sizes. To watch that full video here of comparing these two bikes, click the thumbnail on the screen.